I'm Ala Efimova. And I'm Terry Kahn. Welcome to the fifth episode of our blog about Sonia Rappaport's conceptual project, Objects on My Dresser. Between 1979 and 1983, as she mourned her mother's death, Rappaport collaborated with a psychologist to analyze and interpret the personal significance of souvenirs and mementos that accumulated on her bedroom dresser. The project unfolded over five years in what Rappaport called phases or iterations, which we now have documented and researched for an upcoming book. More about the entire project, as well as previous episodes of this video blog can be found on the Sonia Rappaport Legacy Trust website. Besides being a momentous conceptual art project that took the form of installations, performances, publications, and artist books, Objects on My Dresser is also pioneering in its turn to computing and data visualization. In the prior episode, we talked with art historians and curators Kaylee Perkoff and John Zarabel, who helped us understand the context in which Rappaport subverted the emerging protocols of scientific data gathering and coding by creating a set of data based on her personal collection of mementos and their highly idiosyncratic psychological associations. In this episode, we again talk with Kaylee Perkoff and John Zarabel, as well as Catherine Wade, this time about the attention that Rappaport paid to the material aspects and formal qualities of computer input and output artifacts, such as punch cards, plotter prints, and perforated continuous feed paper. She drew, typed, stenciled, and collaged on top of them. In Objects on My Dresser, as well as other bodies of work produced around the same time, she treated them as aesthetic objects and worked responsibly with them. She boldly claimed them as substrates for her own practice and her own visual language. Welcome to our guests in order of appearance. Kaylee Perkoff is an art historian who studies the intersection of design, technology, and gender. She included Rappaport's work in the recently curated exhibition, The Computer Pays Its Debt, Women, Textiles, and Technology, 1965 to 1985. John Zarabel teaches art history at the University of San Francisco. As a former curator at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art, he spent many hours in Rappaport's studio and contributed an essay on the relationship between drawing and data in her work, to Pairing Up Polarities, the book I edited in 2012. Catherine Wade is an assistant curator at the San Jose Museum of Art, where she recently curated the exhibition, Biorhythm which focused on Rappaport's work during the late 1970s and early 1980s. Early kind of historicization of computer art and really even attention kind of on its early arrival in the late 1960s tended to focus on the informational to the exclusion of the material. Um, really artistic engagement with technology during this period of time was often marked by this like very deep ambivalence of the post-war era, right? There's kind of ideas of cybernetics and concepts of technology became a driving force in the field, but there was a quality of ambivalence and uncertainty around it. Um, and this was driven by a lot of different things, the, the kind of lingering trauma of the Second World War, the dawning realizations of the atrocities of the Vietnam War, and it's really systems theory as opposed to technological tools themselves that are being seen as driving artistic production. And really narratives sense have tended to focus on conceptual practice and immaterial forms of production. Um, so for example, if we think about some really notable um, exhibitions from the history of computer art practice, um, I'm thinking here of the software exhibition at the Jewish Museum in 1970. Well, we have there, um, you know, Robert Berry's ultra wave piece um, in which this is, you know, simply a, 
um, to our eyes, empty room that contain, according to Barry, ultrasonic waves, or even for that matter, um, maybe an example a little more pertinent would be Hans Hacke's news um, from 1969 that has a continuous printout of teletype of news transmitted from around the country. Um, and I think in pieces like Hakka's and in other pieces from this era, there's this idea that the material um, substrate in a way of the continuous feed printout or the computer punch card is in a sense ancillary and less important than the information it carries, right? It's ephemeral. It is objects that can be um, put to waste. Um, and that quality of creating a hierarchy in which the material is seen as less than the information rich is something I'm really interested in. And so for example, my show, we featured Sonia's yarn, yarn drawings from the early 1970s. And I love those pieces so very much because they turn this history on its head, right? This fact that she literally found these computer punch cards in the trash at UC Berkeley, um, as the story goes, and really um, used them as the um, canvas for these pieces, I think really turns this hierarchy on its head. And she's able to invest these computer punch cards with new meaning, right? The informational becomes um, a resource for her aesthetic practice. And I think that is so very lovely. And I think that is so very important. I think in the last, um, I don't know, 10 years or so, there's been a renewed attention to the materiality of these information systems um, and a kind of refocusing on the interplay of materiality and information. And I think that's exactly what her work is doing in the early 1970s in a really rich and really powerful way. Um, and there's other contemporary artists and designers who are looking at the material rich aspects of today's information technologies in a ways that I think have a lot of resonance with her. So I'm thinking here of the works of Timo Arnall. Um, he has a video project by the name of Internet Machine from 2014, which takes us into these physical spaces of an internet server. So we can hear the fans needed to cool the machines and see the physical spaces that they exist in. And this, this thinking of the material rich alongside the informational um, is something that I think Sonia's work was doing in a quite early um, in this larger history and is something as someone who puts themselves as a craft scholar and really interested in materiality, um, something that drew me to her work um, in a very strong way. This is one of my most interesting, you know, discoveries with talking to Sonia is that she um, she originally just found these things in a you know in a in a trash can outside of a, a lab right um, and became fascinated with the printouts um, now these kinds of things if we saw them today would be like oh my gosh it's so antiquated right um, because there are these 15 inch sheets um, with you know the the sides had the holes so you could run them through these big printers right and they produce these um, data displays right and those data displays are of course signs right each of those numbers or symbols is a sign which communicates um, uh, a meaning right in a broader understanding of that um, data analysis for a lab or you know a scientific experiment right um, but she became interested in the way in which um, uh, this data could be presented visually and the abstract symbols or images that would emerge from um, the bringing together of all these signs into a broader network, which was the, you know, if you knew how to read the data, this was the answer to the question you're asking, right? Um, but if you didn't, you just looked at this thing and you saw 
um, a, a pattern or a design that was basically made by a machine, right? Now, of course, the machine is calculating data inputs, right? Pieces of information that people are adding to it. But the, the idea that the machine could produce a synthesis of human inputs um, that would have a kind of aesthetic character, I think, was a kind of fundamental discovery for her. And so that's when she began to work with the um, uh, datas. Uh, data sheets as aesthetic objects, right? She began to draw on them. She began to um, uh, use transfer um, uh, of images onto those data sheets, right? And to embellish them, I guess you would say, in order to sort of produce layers of meaning, right? And to really reconsider what the artist's task is. Like, how does the artist create an image out of a, a set of inputs? And, um, and what's different about it when a computer does it? And how can an artist then work back into what the computer has generated in order to um, uh, try to create that sort of um, collaborative or collaboration, if you will, with the machine, right? <laughs> to have a, a kind of image result. But in the end, I think she wasn't very happy um, she wasn't satisfied, let's put it that way, with the, with the results. In other words, she was very, she did some very interesting stuff. Um, I love the way she like sewed these sheets together with yarn, right? A kind of feminist um, uh, gloss on what is a highly masculinized object, i.e. A, a sheet with a, you know, numbers running across it seems like a very computers, the, the domain of, you know, masculinity, right? Um, where she's taking these, you know, the yarn and sewing them back together. Obviously, these are essentialized ideas of gender, but I think relatively current in, in the moment, at least in her consciousness, in terms of the way she was sort of critiquing um, uh, scientific um, ideas or scientific approaches, right? And, and trying to personalize them. Um, and, and so in that sense, she's reworking them in a variety of ways. But in the end, um, Sonia realizes that she's still on the outside, right? She needs to get inside. Um, she needs to start thinking if she wants to really get serious about um, how to work with machines, she can't just take their outputs and work with them, right? She needs to start to engage with the machines themselves. And, and so and that sort of ends up with a different um, articulation. Now, I think that there's artistic precedence for that, right? Um, and the way in which um, artists were thinking about concepts and systems um, in the 1960s certainly had a huge impact on her in terms of, you know, how to generate um, how to work with a computer to generate inputs that would um, kick out some outputs that she was interested in, right? Um, but she had to collaborate, and that was the key, is she wasn't any longer working solely as an artist, sort of taking the leftovers from an experiment that was produced by a scientist in collaboration with a machine. She was now starting to work with scientists and collaborate with them in order to set up the um, terms by which those inputs would be generated so that she could, in some ways, um, uh, select the way the outputs would look. To me, what's really interesting about those pieces is this layering of her own kind of like coded language um uh, uh the new shoe language of course um and and on top of the coded language of a computer and something that um i was thinking about recently the work she sells which was recently gifted to sjma's collection by the sonia rapaport legacy trust um she writes out Rappaport. She spells out her name on it and does so with stencils. And to me, it's sort of this defiant um, move of, of taking up space in this computer analyzed world and saying and making space for herself on this page. Thank you to our guest today for shining a new light on objects on my dresser. We greatly appreciate their time and perspective.